It's The Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert coming to you from New York City, where I'm at the Left Forum, the 2019 Left Forum, which takes place every year in New York. I'm joined now by Heinz Bierbaum, who is a former or deputy chair of the uh, Left Party, Die Linke of Germany, and he's also a member of the international, the chair of the International Commission of Die Linke, and also part of the political commission of the European left. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. So I want to start out, since uh, you are on the uh, International uh, Commission of the European Left, I want to start out with a, a question about uh, the recent European Parliament elections. Now, those elections, to be honest, did not go so well for the German left, at least. Um, they, it went better for some other countries, uh, but for the German left, it got a relatively low percentage. I think it was something like five and a half percent in the recent correct. elections. And, um, uh, the Social Democrats suffered quite badly, too. The main winners uh, were the Green Party, which practically doubled their representation in the European Parliament. That's not true. So um, what I'm wondering is, first of all, what happened? Why did the left do so poorly in that election? What's your analysis? The result of the uh, German left is the same as uh, the entire left in Europe had, because uh, the entire left in Europe, with, with some exceptions, for example, the bloc or the left bloc in Portugal, or the uh, PDV in Belgium, uh, the Labour, it's called the Labour Party in Belgium, it's a very left-wing Marxist party, they had a big success, but um, the entire left suffered a clear defeat at the European elections. What have been the reasons? I think the, the situation of 2019 is different compared with the situation of 2014 when we had the last elections for the European Parliament. Because 2014 we had uh, the dramatic social consequences of the neoliberal austerity policy that was in favour to the left. New movements have been created like Podemos in Spain for example. 2019 it was different. There have been other uh, the subjects, uh, there have been other elements, other issues like climate change, migration, migration, also social aspects of course, and that was really in favor of, uh, of the Greens, because the climate change was a big issue uh, discussed during the uh, election campaign, and the left, the whole left, in Germany uh, on national level and on European level was not in the position to present itself as a strong political alternative, alternative to the neoliberal politics, alternative to the far rights. But the most alarming element, most alarming development of this election is still the rise of the far right. It was not so big that uh, was expected, it was expected higher, it was not so high as expected, but it's still very high because they have a quarter of all the seats of the European parliaments and that's a new situation we are facing now. And I think um, the re real reason is that uh, the left was not able to present itself as an alternative and not having the answers corresponding to the challenges we are facing like ecological problems, climate change, and so on. And the Greens, that's the difference. The Greens were seen as a force having the answers. I'm convinced that the Greens don't have real the answers, uh, but they are seen as a force having the answers, because uh, with the green capitalism, green uh, modernization of capitalism seems to be uh, recipe for uh, the, the problems. Uh, and I think uh, that the left is right in insisting on the connection between social and ecological uh, aspects, between social and ecological dimension. I think that's really very important because I don't think that it's uh, possible to have a solution for all the ecological problems we are facing without resolving the social problems. And therefore, we should um, 
more focus on this and we should shape our profile in this direction. We very often talk about uh, the, so, uh, the need of the social ecological transformation. I think that is right, but it's too abstract. We have to concretize what we mean with that. And I think we should uh, not only uh, focus on the connection between the social and the ecological aspects, but also focus on the term transformation. Because I'm convinced uh, that a real so uh, solution of the ecological problems we, we are facing is not possible within an economic system dominated by profit. And therefore, we have to overcome the limits of capitalist uh, development. One of the criticisms that I've heard sometimes of the left, and I think the point that you raise about the importance of combining the social and the ecological elements is certainly a point well taken and certainly something I've uh, encountered among left in Germany, let's say that this is what is needed. But one of the other issues or criticisms I've heard is that uh, the left party, just like all political parties in Germany, are too removed from the society in general, that they need to work closer together with the social movement. So what's your response to that? Yes, I think that's true. You know, uh, the left party, the link in Germany, is a very pluralistic party. Um, and our uh, main goal, our main aim is social justice, a uh, society of social justice against militarization and so on. And we are unfortunately focusing too much on parliamentary activities. Parliamentary activities are uh, important. It's really very important to be present in the parliament because the voters they want to, uh, us uh, be, to be in the parliament. But that's for a left party, not enough. It's not sufficient. We have to combine the parliamentary activities with the activities of social movements, of trade unions outside the parliament. I think we neglected a little bit this uh, part of uh, a really uh, left uh, of really left activities. So we have to uh, work more with the social movements and with the trade unions and trade unions as well. And uh, we are fighting, uh, for example, that's one of our uh, most important issues. We are fighting against a precarious work because even in a country like Germany, with a normally well-doing uh, economic uh, economy, uh, we have a, a, a widespread sector of uh, precarious work and therefore we are fighting against. And that could, we have to do that in the parliament but with the social movements outside of the parliament. Only if we create another political climate in society, we are able to have success. Mm -hmm. I want to turn for a moment to the um, situation in Germany more in general. Yeah. Uh, currently, uh, the government of Germany is a coalition government between the Christian Democrats and the Social Democrats. And it looks like a fairly fragile uh, alliance. Uh, there's always talk about the possibility that this uh, coalition will fall apart. Uh, I'm just wondering, what are your thoughts on uh, the, uh, the ability of this uh, coalition to, to, to continue till the end of its term, uh, which I believe would be something like another two and a half years, um, or, or maybe it's more, I'm not sure. But, uh, um, and and uh, what are the chances for the left if um, there are new elections uh, that are, come early? And you are perfectly right. We have a new situation in Germany and in uh, the whole Europe because um, the political landscape is uh, changing very rapidly. Concerning Germany, it's, uh, it's correct that uh, now the coalition between the Christian Democrats and Socialists is very fragile. And we don't know if uh, they come to the end of the period. Uh, that's uh, uh, an open question. And you have to take into consideration that the former big parties, they, uh, they are losing ground. Uh, that's it's true for the Christian Democrats, uh, for Christian Democrats, but it's in particular true for the Social Democrats. They are in crisis, in a deep crisis. At the European elections, they got uh, about 15%, the worst result ever. And now, according to the polls, they have only uh, 12%. That's nothing for a, a, a party like the really very traditional, very important social democratic party of 
uh, Germany, the SPD. That's, uh, that's something very, very new. On the other hand, we have the rise of the Greens. Now the Greens are competing with the Christian Democrats for the first place. And uh, we have, unfortunately, still a big success of the uh, uh, right. And also, I suppose, in the upcoming uh, regional uh, elections uh, in uh, autumn in uh, the eastern part of, uh, of Germany. And, but I think uh, this situation, it's certainly very difficult, but on the other hand, it offers also possibilities, also possibilities for us, for the left. We have to present our, uh, ourselves really as a um, uh, political force with a clear political profile. And so we are aiming to um, make some uh, alliances and, uh, with uh, the Greens and also with the Social Democrats. It's not so easy because you certainly know that the Greens are very often in favor of uh, coalitions with the uh, Democrats, and they are not the left party. They uh, <laughs> have been in uh, some many years ago, many years ago, I must say. And, uh, but nevertheless, there are some possibilities, and we need some um, uh, joint projects. I think um, the climate change and the ecological aspect could be a, really a very big. Uh, subject for us uh, to have uh, common projects and if we are able to combine social and ecological aspects and convince the Greens and the Greens are open in this direction and the Social Democrats also, I think there are also possibilities to have some alliances but we have to create the, uh, the political climate, uh, climate, climate in, in the society in favor of such uh, alliances. And that's uh, a political process. Um, I think we should uh, take into consideration that the whole uh, political landscape in, uh, in Europe is, is changing. Uh, it's even uh, uh, more obvious in France, for example, the traditional party system collapsed in, in France. And we have the same things happening in Germany, also in other uh, countries, but I, I still uh, convinced that uh, offers also opportunities for the left. Well, that reminds me of another issue, perhaps or problem, and when you talk about alliances with uh, other parties, particularly the Social Democrats and the Greens, uh, the problem that has always historically been for the left. Uh, having come out of a merger between the left social democrats and the uh, party of democratic socialism which was the former socialist party of eastern germany there have been a tremendous resistance of the other parties to accept any kind of cooperation with the uh, left party at least on a national level i know that on a local level that's been happening all the time yes. but on a national level it's been a tremendous barrier do you see that uh, a possibility for overcoming that barrier that that there will be more cooperation on a national level i think uh, there is a possibility to overcome the barriers because uh, you're right that we have some alliances some coalitions on regional and local level for example in thuringen uh, we have, uh, led by a, uh, a member of the uh, Die Linke, Bodo Ramela, we have a coalition between uh, Die Linke, uh, the Greens and the Social Democrats, and we have this also uh, probably in Bremen now after the recent elections, and there are some possibilities. But the problem was always the national level. But I think um, the weakness of the Social Democrats offer some possibilities. It's not very uh, good for us to have such a weak social, uh, such a weak social democratic party. It's not good for the left. We are competing, of course, with some, but we have to have also a strong social democratic party in order to change uh, polit policies and politics in Germany. And the problem is that uh, the social democratic party has to overthink their strategy. Uh, it has to go more to the left. They should uh, look a little bit to uh, Portugal to, with the Socialist Party. They shifted to the left, and they should also look a little bit to uh, Corbyn's Labour Party in uh, the UK. 
Um, I think there are possibilities that the social democratic party is going more to the to the left. There are internal problems and internal barriers within, within the social democratic parties, um, but it's a very important and necessary debate. And therefore, I think there is also it's difficult, of course, but there is still a possibility to overcome also the national barriers. I mean, one of the interesting things, returning back to the European levels, uh, I recently saw an article, I'm not sure if it was in the New York Times, but talking about uh, how uh, the social democratic parties of Europe in general are rediscovering social democracy <laughs> because uh, they've been uh, so influenced by neoliberalism, they've steadily moved yeah. to the right over the last 10, 20 years. Uh, they now real and losing votes as a result, and now they're discovering that they have to move back towards the left, just as you're saying. Um, but uh, I'm wondering now, so uh, whether that, uh, how you see the situation more on a European-wide level in terms of um, the uh, rebuilding of the, uh, let's say, social democrats and maybe cooperation with the left, because part of the problem seems to be that um, that the neoliberal uh, paradigm has been so deeply entrenched, not just in theory, but also in practice. It's going to be very difficult, I think, uh, for um, any government in Europe now, especially with the European Union, having this neoliberal orientation to overcome uh, the, uh, the problems uh, that is uh, uh, to, to reintroduce, so to speak, the welfare state. Uh, how do you see that situation? I agree that it's very difficult for them to overcome the neoliberal paradigm because it's really very deeply in these parties and the problem is not in theory, the problem is in the practice. They pursue the neoliberal policy, uh, policy, uh, policy uh, in the entire Europe, all of them, nearly all of them, with some exceptions of course. And under the pressure of the left, for example, in Portugal, the Socialist Party, uh, turned a little bit more t uh, t uh, to the left because it was only under the pressure of, uh, otherwise it was not possible to form a government led by the socialists in, in Portugal. And it was an interesting movement also uh, within the Labour Party uh, with a resistance against the neoliberal policy. But it's still very difficult. But we have a very, very different um, situation of the Social Democrats Party now in Europe, you know that the Socialist Party of uh, Spain, the PSOE, they had a big success in the European elections and international elections as well. And they are going a little bit towards the, uh, the left. But it's still very difficult in Spain because um, they don't want to have a coalition with uh, the left, with Podemos and uh, Izquierda Unida. But, because, but something is moving, something is, is moving. And um, I think it's, it's really a big challenge for the socialist and the social democrats to overcome their neoliberal paradigm, paradigm because it's a, it's a part of the, uh, of the practice of the party in the last years. But they have to overcome it, otherwise it's not possible. And um, we have a uh, very um, differentiated uh, political panorama in the entire Europe also concerning the left because the left is still uh, strong in the southern parts of Europe and Portugal and still in Spain even if they lost compared with the last elections but they are still an important force. And we have of course a problem of uh, the Syriza like government in Greece, you know Syriza uh, uh, increased a lot uh, with the resistance against neoliberal politics and under the pressure of the European institutions that the Tyrus led government pursued more or less a neoliberal policy that created not, pro created not problems for seriously in Greece but for the whole uh, European left. And uh, then we have the real very uh, well, it's a very difficult situation in Italy. The, the political left in Italy doesn't exist anymore. And we have the problem of Eastern Europe. Because in Eastern Europe, that's our problem in Europe, our facing uh, the, the political developments in the Eastern Europe. Because the left is, with the exception of, Slo of Levica in Slovenia, it nearly doesn't exist. 
and uh, after the European elections, uh, the left is even weaker in the eastern part of Europe, and we have uh, to uh, face uh, uh, a tendency to the uh, far right in Poland, in Hungary, and, and so on. And that's a big problem. And therefore, I think there's really a need that we have a political debate concerning alternatives, left alternatives. And one possibility to discuss it are the so-called European forums. As you probably know, uh, the last Congress of the party of the European left 2000, in December 2016 in Berlin decided to launch a European forum as a platform for all the blockage uh, forces, not all, uh, only for the parties belonging to the European left, but also for blockage forces within the Greens, the Socialists, and so on. The first uh, time it, was, it took place in Marseille, 2017, then last year in Bilbao, and uh, now it's provided uh, for November this year in Brussels. And I think we should um, take this opportunities to uh, launch a political process uh, concerning the perspectives, the left perspectives uh, of Europe policy. Okay, well, on that note, we're going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much. I'm speaking to Heinz Bierbaum, uh, former deputy chair of the left party and currently member of the political commission uh, of the European left. Uh, thanks again, Heinz, for having joined us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.